Okay, so we're going to do a brass tutorial here. Um, there's two metal tutorials I still would like to do. The one is this brass one I'm doing now, and then the next one is one on bronze, which I haven't touched at all. So the first thing we're going to do is grab a V-Ray material here. And we've got our thinker here. We're just going to assign this to there. And then what we want to do is just click on both of these, just so you can see the background coming on and off. And here you can see this material here in the viewport. So what we're going to do, turn off for now, make a reflection to start with white, um, and your diffuse black. Now, the reason we make this black is because, you know, as you come down on your reflection here, all you do is you introduce in the diffuse. So it's like, okay, this is how much it's reflecting the environment, the rest is diffuse. So if you do that, you know, that doesn't really look like a metal. But if you come here and make this black, then it starts looking more metallic. You can bring this down so you can see what's going on. But what we're doing here is just, yeah, make that black. And we're just going to push this up. Now, traditionally, all we've done to create metals originally is, you know, if I bring this down, um, you can just Google, hey, you can just Google brass. You know, you've got these various different images and you take one which you like. And you literally click on reflect, click on, click on the picker here, and you can just pick a color off one of these. You know, I know you see a hand now, but it's actually all pick that color. And you see, so you get that color coming straight in here. Now, this isn't necessarily what you want. You know, that's not quite correct. That's not what you're expecting to get. And you can just mess around with it here. Uh, you can bring up the saturation if you like. You can take all three of these and just push them down to here if you like. Uh, bring up the saturation again. You know, you can play around with it. The point is, with brass and what you need to understand with brass, you know, if you still don't like it, you can always pick another color off here. You can pick that. But what you need to understand with brass here is brass, as opposed to copper, is an alloy. So it's made up of various metals. And these are all different examples of brass over here on the side. And these are some of the different names of brasses, you know, uh, if you look through here, you've got copper in there, you've got zinc, you've got tin, you've got lead, and you've got various other elements in there, iron, aluminium, arsenic, um, manganese, nickel, silicone. So you've got all of these, and these are just some of the names, and these are going to look different, okay? These aren't going to look the same. So... When someone says they want brass, it's important to get a reference image because, you know, that brass looks nothing like this brass. But they're both brasses. I've gone through and I've picked up some uh, reference images for you. And if you look at these, these are just various different types. This one here has a lot of lead in it. But it's still a brass. So, you know, what type of brass is your client after? What do they want? And if they haven't told you, it's a good idea to ask them because otherwise you're not going to know what you're creating, you know. And you get ones like like this. This is just a man-made, you know, dirty brass. This is, brass doesn't necessarily naturally do this. It does to a degree, but, you know, man's come along and made it look like this. So you get that type of brass as well. Um, but all of these are different types of brass, and they're many different colors and everything else. So it's important to get your reference so you know what you're doing and what color uh, the client wants and needs from you. In this case, um, here it is. I'm just going to grab one of these. Actually, I can also just grab it from a photo, one of these photos I have open. So if I leave that there, I can just come along, pick this, and just pick this color. And that's what we normally do for brass. Now, we're going to create this with a fall off. OK, um, but what's important to realize here is that you have these look at the distance between the blue and the green and the red, because what we're going to do here is we're going to come along, we're going to grab a map and we're going to we're going to copy that. So we're going to take a fall off and we're going to plug that straight into refraction. And of course, I plugged it into refraction. There you go. OK, and we're not going to use the mix curve. We're going to use output. So first of all, you have to enable the color map and then click on RGB over here. And then turn off green and blue. We're just going to take the red. And if you don't remember where they were, you know, 
you can see, okay, red is higher, then green, then blue. And there's a bigger distance between green and blue. So we're just going to take the red here. Just close that mix. And just drag that up. And to put an extra point in here, and right click and drag that down. And right click Bezier Smooth and just pull that over. You know, you can pull it slightly down if you want to, but that's not really necessary. I'm going to take green and bring it here and put an extra point. You can already see it starting to get the, you know, the color here going on of, of brass. And then we're going to get blue. And just bring that up a little bit. And put that there and drag that down. And make that busy as smooth. And see green. And red. Okay, good. So we have that. Now, we can take all three of these if we want to move them up, if we want to make it brighter. Move the red up a little bit. Move the green up a little bit. But you can play around with this to your heart's content until you get that to the correct color that you, that you need. And we've already assigned this to the thinker. And if I do a little render here, you'll see what we have coming up. And that on its own is literally a photorealistic brass. So we'll leave it at that stage. Now I'm just going to unhide the next guy. And we'll create another material here and assign that to him. So what we're going to do in this case is I've googled brass textures. And these are the ones which have, have come up, which I was looking at. Some of them are just very different, but, you know, they're all brass. We're going to use this one here. And all we'll, we're literally going to do, we're going to make this real simple. we just grab a V-Ray material. And I'm not going to use a fall-off in this. I'm just going to use that map. And someone can complain and say, well, it's a metal. It should have a fall-off. And they're correct. It should have a fall-off. But the question is, is, are you going to see the difference? So we're going to turn off for now. And reflection, we can just leave where it is. And I'm just going to come along here. Actually, let's make this full screen again. I'm going to come along here and just grab that, drag and drop. And I'm going to plug this straight into the reflection map there. And like I said, it's coming out weird because the diffuse here is gray and not black. So we're just going to make that black. And then we're going to take this glossiness and drop this down. And, you know, if you look at this, this isn't coming out looking the same. If I view this image, you know, that's what it looks like. And that's what the metal looks like. And that's not the same. So what we need to do is we need to raise the color of this. And there's various ways you can do that. Uh, the way I like to do it, because when you're working with other people, it keeps things simple and they can see and understand what's going on, is I'll take a, a color correction. And I'll plug it straight in there. And click on Advanced. And I just change this. And if I put that at about 3, that's too high. Okay, let's try 2. That's okay. 1.8. We can just come down a bit. But that's about right. And the thing I like with color correction, because of course another way of doing it is coming here in the output and playing around with this output amount. Um, but the reason I like this, you know, and still a third way of doing it is you come here and you click on here, and then you can mess around here with override and change it in here. So these are different ways you can do the same thing, but what I like about this is no one's trying to guess what you've done. They can see, oh, it's in the color correction, and then they can look in the color correction and they can instantly see what's happened and what's been done. So, you know, otherwise you go, oh, it's brighter. Okay, well, how? And then you've got to figure out what the person's done to do it. So this keeps it, you know, communicated very clearly to whoever else is working with you on this project. So we put that in there. And then we want a bump going on. So, you know, we can take the same one and put that into the bump. Oops. And if I open the preview window, you know, we can see what's going on here with the bump. And if I take this... And uh, if I bring here the blur and just right click on this, that'll make it the smallest possible. A lot of extra noise comes in here. So I don't think I want that, but I probably want it down pretty low, like 0.1. Not so much noise, but just low. I think that'll be nice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the same one here into reflection glossiness. And then what that's going to need is it's going to need 
Uh, it's going to need again a color correction. We're going to need to make that brighter. So we just put a color correction in there. And if we try this at two, and you can see, I'm just right clicking to open this preview window, by the way. You can see instantly the change here, the difference. And if we put that at four, and five. You can see what's happening. You can see the amount of, of you know, reflection going on here. The, the glossiness, how precise that is. But I think three is probably good enough. That might even be too much, but we'll try that. Now, the next thing to make sure is, is because we're using a bitmap, you know, I've got real world scale off and my tiling here is set to one and one. And this guy has mapping on him. So this is set to a box and real world is off and that's set. So this will work. This material hasn't been assigned yet. So if I assign this there, and then we can click on here and say show material, and that's another error going on here. Let's change this to facets and he'll come back. Okay, so you can see here, this was with V-Ray 3.6, and you know, it's a bit of an issue, but you can see here the map, and you can see the texture, and you can see what's going on. So if we press F9 now, you can see these two very different uh, brass materials. And I think both of them are pretty nice. One of them is just plain, clean brass, and the other one has got this old texture here on it. Now, we're going to take another texture and do a very similar thing here. So we're just going to unhide another item here. We'll unhide Thinker 2. And Thinker 2 is going to get another material, similar, but slightly different, and we'll use a fall-off on this one. So what we're going to do is come along, grab another V-Ray material, Take this, put it over here. You don't have to double click on these, I'm just doing it so you can see a bit more what's going on here in the material as I'm creating it. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna assign this, control Z, assign it to this guy. And we're gonna turn off for now to make the diffuse black. And then we're gonna come along and we're gonna take this texture. Oh, we're gonna use a different one. Okay, let's use, let's use this guy. Let's see if this works. I'm not promising it will, but I think it would be awesome if it does. Let's try that. I'm going to plug this in here. And if I plug that into reflection, you see it immediately comes in. Um, this is going to be interesting. Uh, we'll try it out and we'll see what happens. So what we're going to do is we come along and we grab a map. Uh, we're going to, like I said, do it with the fall off. So we're going to take this, plug this into reflection, and we're going to recreate that uh, brass from earlier. So the mixed curve can be closed. Enable color map RGB. We need to turn off green and blue. We're just going to take the red, bring it up out there, extra point in here. Right click, Bezier Smooth, bang, green on. You know, you can do this fast, right? New point here. Right click, pull that down, right click, Bezier Smooth, okay, green off, blue on. The question you should be asking yourself when you're creating a material is, does it look good? You shouldn't be asking yourself, is this completely photorealistic? You should be asking yourself, does it look photorealistic? And if it looks photorealistic, then good, okay, great. There's no reason to do anything else with it. So, you know, you can always work and tweak things and mess with things, but it's not always necessary. So this anisotropy, we're going to play with this as well, and this will put it up to 0.4, and we'll rotate that 90 degrees. Actually, let's make this 0.5 or 6 even. Let's do 6. Okay, great. Now what we're going to do, we want to put this guy in here on top. So we're going to use a composite map and plug it in here. And make an extra layer up here. Plug this guy straight in. And what we're going to do is, let's just flick through these and see what happens, see what the change is. I kind of like multiply. Because I get the original brass color through. Spotlight's great. Okay. Hard light's good. Even pin light's nice. Value is okay. I like value. Ooh, 
let's use value. Okay, great. So if we put this and make it so we can see what's happening within the viewport. And pop W, let's zoom in. And I think I've got to turn this to facets because of this bug. Okay. Let's see if we can let's isolate this guy and let's spin around. Let's see what he's actually doing with this map. I'm not sure how much I like this map. Uh, the way it's on him. I mean, I like the map. I just don't know how much I like how much it's on him. Uh, let's try each of these at one meter. I would love to have this pattern up on his head, you know. Uh, let's see if we can flip these. Okay. Yeah, I like that more. We've got stuff happening up here on his head and around there and you know. See here, this is different mapping here and there and because that's gonna come out weird, what you can do, the easiest way to stop this from being weird and mapping oddly is you <laughs> you use a V-ray um what's it called? Triplanar texture. Use this V-ray triplanar texture. Now, the problem with this is this uses only real-world scale. So what we're going to have to do is uh, take this map. And because this guy applies to all of them, we're just going to make him unique. There's other things I could do, but in this case, I'm going to make him unique. And I'm going to change his map to real-world scale. And so we can see this. I'm going to put it on real-world scale. And I'm going to put it on 1,000. Okay. And now... He is mapped on there very differently. And the reason it's mapped on there very differently is because when you have real world scale, what it does is it maps it right in the middle. See the map is cut here. So what it's done is it's taken this map and it's wherever the middle, the center of this thing is. I press front there. Let's go perspective again. Oops. Let's, go, let's close this. Okay, let's come back here. Okay. What it does is... Where's the gizmo? There. So this gizmo is right in the middle. And it's mapping the picture from here. So it goes, okay, this is the very corner. It takes this on real-world scale. It takes that as the corner of the map. So this map is taken like that corner and thrown it right there. And if you use not real world scale, what it does is it goes, oh, okay, the box. So it goes the whole cycle. So instead of it having the corner being here, it goes the corners up here. So you see, that's how it does it differently. This does corner up here and real world scale puts the corner right here in the middle. So again, it's just something you need to be aware of when you're doing maps you know, how it's actually putting it on there. So, if this is the case, you can just go into the gizmo like I've done here and you can just move the gizmo. Until it's doing, you know, what you want it to do. And I think that looks pretty cool actually. So what we're going to do is bring up the material editor again, come out of isolation mode, and we're going to use this triplanar texture just on those edges to make it so the edges don't look like edges. And what you do is you just literally plug that straight into the texture and plug that into layer one, layer the layer there, and then double click here. And this says the size, so you know we've already told it the size here, so you can just leave that at one, and the blend amount. Now, if I click render here, if I come out of here and go back into my render scene here, press F9, and you can see some of the mapping coming through here on his on his leg. And what we're doing is, by leaving this at 1, we're saying, use this real-world scale here. But otherwise, we can take this, and if we set this at 1,000, you see, now it's made it a 1,000 times bigger. So it's humongous. 
So instead of doing that, we leave this at one. But the problem is, is you can't see what this is doing on, on this guy. And like I said, this has its own UV. And you can change that in here. If you look at the, the Chaos Group forum for, or Chaos Group website and do look at V-Ray Triplane and Texture, it will explain how this works and offsetting here and texture rotation here. And uh, if you want it to be on this object or on another object. So you can do this and... You can, it, it's some awesome stuff. We'll go into this in another tutorial, but this is, I love using this. It really does a good job of blending those edges and making them disappear so you don't notice them. I use it on sofas, I use it on all sorts of things. So, in this case, we're just going to mess around with it a bit. Let's just see what he's doing. I'm not so sure. I like this. Um, da -da 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 -da. On value. Let's again try normal. Multiply is just too dark. Spotlight's nice, but again, I think it's too going to be too dark, and it's too red. Too red for my liking, anyway. I like hard light, but. Yeah, we can use that. Okay, so we're going to use that. Um, and then what we're going to do is... We're going to desaturate this. Just because I, I don't like the red being there that much. So, we come along, we go Maps, General. Again, Color Correction, we put it in here. Right-click on this. And we can actually just shift the hue. If you keep an eye on this and what's happening, you can shift the hue down and it gets more you know, red, and you can come this way and it gets less red. So even a tiny amount can make a big difference. And now he's looking much more like brass. So we've also got this guy here coming into the bump. So, and also what I want to do for this, just for this one, is we'll come out of this and we're going to put a, a V-Ray Displacement modifier on here. And we can put that on. And we're going to take this triplane texture, so it's the same texture you see here. And we're going to put this straight into here. And then we're going to say, okay, do it by 100. 100 millimeters, so 10 centimeters. And then you, this, everything else here can stay the same. Uh, all I'm going to do is keep continuity, that kind of stops it from breaking up, and then right click here and make this as low as possible. And that will again help keep the mesh together. And now if I render this, I'll probably be turning down this displacement amount in a minute. <laughs> as you can see, he's pretty cool. Looks like a spiky bear or something. So what we can do is do a normal amount. 10 is 1 centimeter, but... Again, it might be too much. I don't know if he's had his X form reset, if he knows what size he is. So, you know, how much is 10 centimeters in? Sorry, 10 millimeters, one centimeter in relation to this guy. Could be quite a bit. So that's fine. We're gonna go three, three centimeters and let's see if we can get some nice displacement going on here. I like that. It's probably a bit much for my liking. So we're going to come back down to two. And we're going to leave it at that. We'll see how he renders out at the end of the day. But I think he's looking pretty cool. And I love his displacement going on there. Alright, so now we're going to move on to the next one. And to do this, we're going to unhide. I think a three. And let's take think a three. And let's lay this guy out. Now, what are we going to do with Thinker 3? We're going to do something. I'm not sure. Let's see. Now, normally what you get when a client says brass is they want a tarnished brass. 
And the second one there is tarnished, but they might also want something more like that or like this. So, you know, they can be created very simply with one of these textures. We've used that one now. We could use one of these other ones, like this. I think what we're going to do is, what I really want to do is show some old corroded brass in here. And we'll do something like... Here you go, we'll do something like this. And so, to do this, we're going to very simply, we'll come along, we'll go materials, V-Ray, V-Ray material, we'll take it along here, and we'll assign this guy, and then, again, we'll make the diffuse black, and turn off for now. Like I said before, you know, really, if you want to make it very quick, you just come like this. You know, and that's it. <laughs> and that takes you a few seconds to create. But, you know, what we're going to create here is, is something a little bit different. So I'm going to take this map and drop it straight in here. And put that straight into reflection. And we'll go general color correction. Put it in there. Make this advanced gamma. Put that too. Okay, and let's look at this map so we can see what's going on. All right, and then what we're going to do is in this reference, we've got this black, so we're going to create this black separately. And the other thing which we're going to do is we'll take this and we'll plug this straight into reflection glossiness. And we'll put another color correction on there for that. And click on advanced, and let's try three. Yeah, that's fine. And you can see the difference here. And we can even maybe push that up to four. So that's in there. And that makes quite a nice difference here. You can see, you know, if you look at the... Look at this guy up here. And I can also just turn it off here in the map section. So it goes from that to that with a reflection glossiness in. Now, we're going to create this black material here, this black, and then we're going to blend these two materials together. So I'm just going to right click, change material map type, materials, V-Ray, and we're going to use a V-Ray blend material. And this means I don't have to assign this. If I do it this way, it's just change it. So I take this, and then what I want to do is I want to create a black metal. So to do that, I'm going to go V-Ray, V-Ray material, bring it down here, double click. Let's put this straight into coat one. And let's make both of these like that. And click on diffuse. And again, I'm going to cheat here. I'm just going to use for, look for black metal, texture, images. Okay, I like that. And that's big. So we're going to come here and just take this and drop it in there. And put, drop it there. And put that straight into reflection. Put it straight into a diffuse. And double click here and turn off for now. And put it into reflection glossiness. And then we're going to mess around with this a bit to get it looking more how we want it to look. And how we're going to go. Let's use color correction. See, it's too brown. I don't want it to be so brown, so we put color correction here. And we just desaturated a bunch. I don't mind some of the brownness, just not so much. And then this reflection map, that's way too low, so I'm going to put that in there. And raise this up. Let's try five. Now that's way too high, but the glossiness here is messing with us, so we can't see what's going on. So put that in there. And put this at two. 
maybe even three. And this one here, we're going to drop this down to two. Now this also is bringing in, cut in color, so we're just going to desaturate this too. I'm not sure, I might like need this darker. Not there, just like the whites are too white, you know. So, what I'm going to do is bring this back down to one. Actually, that's no, let's leave that at two. And that's, if I bring that off, it's not making much difference, it's getting lots of it from here. It's 1.5. Push this up. That makes it look more like a metal, you see. Okay, if I put that back in there, no, I'll leave it off. Okay, so that's our two metals. And then what we're going to do is we're going to blend these together using a dirt map. So, again, we're just going to need to find one. You can create one really easily. We should do a tutorial on creating dirt maps. Um, but right now, we're just going to Google Dirt Texture. Probably it's better to do Dirt Map. Image. And you want something like this, where it's got whites and blacks. Which can be used. You don't want something like that. There's too, not enough contrast. You need the blacks and whites. That's a nice one. Okay, we're going to use that. And we're just going to plug this straight in here. And we're going to put that on the blend. And then what I'm going to do is, if you look at this image, there's a lot of white, more white than black. So... We're just going to invert this here. And now you get much more black coming through there. OK, great. So we can immediately see this now and how this is working. And that looks pretty nice. So if we put that there and render. And that's looking pretty good. And that's the old corroded uh, brass texture there. And now one more thing which we're going to do. Uh, you have a different type of corrosion here with brass, which is this. You get this blue coming through, this really deep turquoise blue coming through here. You know, if you look there, that's what you get. So we're going to recreate this. And the way we're going to do this, again, is we're going to just take V-Ray. We're going to get a V-Ray material. I'm just going to right-click and unhide this guy. And I'm going to select him, assign this material. And I am actually just going to steal this fall off we made way back here. I'm going to press shift and drag from the first one. And I'm going to plug that straight into the reflection map. I'm going to make the diffuse black. I'm going to turn off for now. I'm going to click on these two. I'm going to bring this glossiness down so you get an idea of what's going on all right and then what we're going to do is we we'll use a composite map so general composite plug it in here layer one and we'll double click add in an extra layer and actually we can use that same dirt map we've just done so i'm just going to shift and drag this dirt map over here and we can put this straight into layer 2. And then layer 2, we'll take a look and we can put it on darker, not multiply. And then reduce this amount. And this is just another way to add in, you know, some detail here. And we can just go through and see what the differences are. Color burn looks kind of nice. If you look, it maintains the color.
you know, it maintains the color uh, without just making it black. And that's extra data here added in. So if I render now, it's going to stop it there. Take this guy here on the end. Render him. You can see these different colors here coming through from this map and the way this has been put together. And I kind of like it. I don't like the reds in there as much, so we can go color correction and just come in here. And again, just move this slightly. Get rid of some of those reds. All right. So that's that one. Now we need to create this blue material. So from here, we can probably just grab one of these. Okay, we'll use this one here. And I from with Photoshop. Okay, if I come along here, I press J, it's going to come down to this. And this is the spot healing brush tool. So what you can do is just, you know, control alt right click on your mouse, get this to the right size, and just brush over, and that will just disappear. And then just save that. And inside max. Get the material editor again. And just drag this over. And we're going to make another material here. A bureau material. And we're going to take this and put this straight into the reflection map. And just click on oh, click on these two. And turn off for now. And make the diffuse black. And plug this straight into reflection glossiness. And that's it. That's pretty much what you need. And you can plug it into bump if you like. And you can do the same up here with this. Plug this one into bump. And we should actually reduce the blur here. So I'm going to reduce this down to 0.1. You can see immediately that, you know, that's got a big effect here. So let's try 0.3. That's got less of an effect. Okay. And we're going to do the same with this. This guy here in there so oh also what we're going to do is reduce here the bump amount that's by default is 30 we don't need it to be at 30 so just open up the maps and turn it down to about four and here we'll probably use set the bumper again set the bumper about eight and right click here and on this blur put this at point one all right and then what we need is we need a uh, V-Ray blend material. So I'm just going to drag that over, put this in as the base, and put this in as coat one. And what I actually want to do to start with on seeing this is we're going to use a V-Ray dirt material. And we're going to just put this on as blend one. And this says occluded color is black and unoccluded color is white. So where it's unoccluded, it's going to show. But I want this to be in the occluded spaces. So just swap these two colors over. And then what we need to do is set the radius of this occluded area. So we're going to set that up to about 100. Oops. And then we need a map in here. So again, we want another dirt map. So... I'm going to take the same map, I'm just going to change the mapping of it. So we can put that straight into the radius instance. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this tiling 3 by 3 And I think that'll look nice. Let's assign it. We'll assign. So we need to assign the material, and then we're going to run down and see what happens. So you can see some blueness coming through here, and some through there, and some through there. And that's all the V-Ray Dirt is doing, it's just adding in this little touch here. It's adding in a little bit of data there. So what we're going to do is take this V-Ray Dirt, and I'm going to set this distribution up to 10. And that's brought it in a little bit stronger in there. Okay, so I've set this radius here at 1000, and I've set the distribution here at 10. Uh, and you can see it's starting to come through here. And we can push this distribution up if you want that effect to be stronger. Um, 
but what's occurring is, you know, it's coming through here because he's got this other guy here behind him, and I'm not sure if you want that, so in order to turn that off, you can go into the V-Ray Dirt and you can say consider same object only. And then we can render, and then we shouldn't be seeing as much dirt here. I imagine we'll still see some like we see some here, just not as much. Alright, so here it's just occurring on him in these areas where, where it should be. And then what we want to do is we want to take, you know, another dirt map, and we're going to blend the same guy here into coat 2. And we're just going to use another dirt map to do that, so... Okay, so we have this dirt map here, and this is this one, and it's a pretty nice dirt map. And if I render this, we've now got the V-Ray dirt in the areas, you know, and we've got this one in other areas here where it's coming through. And there's various things here we can do this to show, out, show this more if we like. Uh, what we can try doing is inverting this to start with. That'll bring through a lot more of the blue. And then render it. And I think the only thing I would argue is normally in a tarnished case, uh, probably this tarnish should be brighter. And probably the brass here shouldn't quite be this shiny. But we'll start with making this blue brighter here. And if I put this into diffuse, that'll make it super bright. And then color correction. And I can actually just bring this down a bit. And this I'm going to desaturate to a degree. And bring this down. And I think that's looking nice. It's all coming together nicely. So we've got various different degrees here of corroded brass. We've got various different types of brass going on here. And yeah, I'm loving it. And that's how you make textures, metal textures, in 3ds Max and V-Ray.